Good evening, good evening, everyone. Pastor Mac here. We're very good live soon. I'm going to ask you to get on the phone, call some people up, and tell them it's Bible study time. We're going to go virtual in a little bit. Just want to welcome you all. God bless you. See some people coming on. God bless you. Good to see you. Good to see you. We still got a few minutes here. We're going to start at 7 o'clock sharp. It's uh, 6.57 right now. So we're going to be starting soon. Let the people start getting in. Tony, good to see you, Tony. God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And ask those get on the you do me a favor, get on the horn and give somebody a phone call for me, please, and tell them we got Bible study starting in another two and a half minutes. And there's a word from the Lord. Call them up, tell them to join us on Facebook. Um, also YouTube, our YouTube channel as well. We have a word from the Lord. God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Those that are coming on, God bless you. Good to see you. God bless you. See some more getting on. Good evening, good evening everyone. God bless you, thank you for joining us. We got one more minute, one more minute. We gonna get started. Welcome, everyone. God bless you. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. We're going to start in a minute. One more minute. We're going to get started. It is 7 o'clock. Praise the Lord. Welcome. Uh, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Gary Mack here. I am one of the associate pastors at Shallow Baptist Church. There's one t church in two locations. We have our church in Volin. We have also our home church in Port Norris. And our senior pastor is the Reverend Dr. James Allen Duncans. I'm so glad to be with you on this evening. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor, if you would. You know, not only do I want you to call somebody, but I want you to push that button, like, and share. We want to make sure we um, we put out the Word of God to the people of God. And even those people that don't know the Lord, the Word of God is for them as well. So we ask you guys to join us. If you take just a few minutes just to hit that like and share, we would greatly appreciate it. Because what that does is it helps us put the Word of God out. And you're part of that. You're part of us spreading the gospel all over the world. Like I said, I'm Pastor Gary Mack, one of the social pastors. Bible study is t starting in three locations. We have a virtual live here. Those are with me. I thank God for you. And also we have in our site, we have our own Pastor Duncans. He's teaching there tonight. Uh, please, if you got time, you're in your car, you're listening to me or whatever you may be. If you got time, get there. Get to violin. Also, my Port Norris family and those that are on that side of the street, we have our own Pastor Cato Brown, who's teaching down in Port Norris. And our main goal, our vision is to, you know, our, our job is to reach others, to care for others. And how can we care for others? What better way can we care for others other than spreading the gospel? Our goal is to have 100% participation in Bible study. 
You got three different locations you could be to join one of, to be faithful to it. If you can get out, please get out. It's good to be able to, pastors, to be able to see your face. When I was teaching, it was a blessing to see those coming in. But if you can't make it, we have the virtual. But if you're saved and you're a part of Shallow Baptist Church, you should be attending one of those. So help us reach our 100%. Amen? We're going to get started. I just want to do my little intro and get that out of the way. I'm so glad to have you. Uh, thank you for those that joined last week. And I just want to do a quick recap of a few things that we talked about last week. Um, you know the scripture was Galatians, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Um, Don't get weary in doing good. For in due season, you will reap if you faint not. And the title of the class, this is part two. We got three more, two or three more chapters to go, parts to go. But I'm so glad you're here because I believe there's a blessing for you tonight. You've been praying for something. You've been asking God for something. And you're going to get your answer tonight. I believe by faith that your prayers are going to be answered. I believe it was already answered. You just have to open up your heart to receive the blessing from the Lord. We, we know how to pronounce a blessing over other people. We know how to pray for people. But we, we find it very difficult to learn how to receive blessings. Sometimes we push them away. But we want to talk about our necessary journey. The journey that you and I go through uh, is necessary. It's for the building of your character and your personality, who you are in Christ. Those that you're able to reach, those that maybe you won't be able to reach, but somebody going to reach them that you have reached. It'll be passed on. You bless them with the word of God, and they're going to carry that word on and bless somebody else. That's how God works. He's amazing, and I love him. And we're going to pray real quick before we get started. Um, just ask you to join me in a quick word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us through this day. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for food, clothing, and shelter, Lord. Sometimes we take those things for granted. But, Lord, we want to stop right now and say thank you. Lord, we know if it had not been for you, we wouldn't have made it this far. And, Lord, for that, we want to give you thanks and honor for all you have done. So right now, Lord, we ask that you open our hearts. Don't, don't just let it be another Bible study where I'm just talking. But, Lord, I pray that the words that you have given me that are anointed and are going to go across the airwave and, and, and create a healing and deliverance in somebody's mind, body, and spirit. So, Lord, I thank you in advance for what you're going to do. And, Lord, I give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Let the body of Christ say amen. Can you give God a quick praise right there in your own home? Let the, run the devil out of that. Say, you know what? I ain't got time for you today, devil. I'm going to get my praise on. I'm going to give God what he deserves. And I'm going to open up my heart and receive what Pastor Mac has to say tonight. And we're all going to be blessed. We're going to sleep good tonight. <laughs> Amen. We talked about Galatians chapter 6. Don't get weary in doing good. In your journey, the journey called life. It can be rough and tedious. We talked about that last week. I don't have time to cover it. I pray that those didn't hear the message or the class last week, please get it. It's on Facebook. Check it out. Get caught up. But for those that did, that was on with me last week, you heard me talk about the not being weary and doing good. Because in due season, if you hang in there, you will reap a blessing if you faint not, if you don't give up. Amen? So I would encourage you tonight that we don't want to give up. But I do want to bring, for those who was listening last week to what we talked, I do want to bring some theological a theological context to what we were talking about. We know Paul is being the author of, the, of Galatians. Um, and I, want, I want, want you to kind of see Paul's heart. Um, Galatians chapter 6, is, it really expands on Paul's teaching about living in God's spirit. This is what he was doing. Paul was addressing that area and in which he gave at the end of Galatians chapter 5. Uh, it describes how Christians who lived in God's spirit should use the power to treat others better. Th those that were living by the spirit of God, those who were followers of Christ, um, in that area, they were treating each other wrong without that godly love. And Paul being the messenger of God, was bringing a message to those who was trying to do right. Just like me, you and I. 
we, we try to live right. We try to live holy. We, 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 we try to be respectful. We, we try to do things that are going to be pleasing to God. But sometimes we can find ourselves on the wrong side of it. I know I'm not by myself. Just hanging in with me. I know where I'm going. We, we, we're going to go somewhere tonight. But I, I need the baby step. This and Paul, Paul wanted to kind of point these things out. And the other thing is, the major theological point Paul makes in this letter, in his letter, is that a person is justified through faith in Christ's death. We're, that's how we are justified. That's how we were just that we hadn't sinned. There was no other way that connect us to salvation other than through the death of Jesus Christ. You you can't go on in life thinking that it's going to be okay. I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to make this journey without Christ, without accepting him as our Lord and Savior. One thing you have to accept, and you have to know it as a believer, that he paid the price for me. Jesus Christ shed his blood for you and I. And that was the very thing, the power of his suffering, the death on the cross, the shedding of his blood. All that took place so I could be connected to the Father, so I could have a right to that tree of life, that I can go boldly. I, I, I don't need to go to a priest or uh, behind a veil and confess my sins. I can come boldly before the throne of grace and say, Lord, help this messed up, jacked up mind that I have, Lord, oh wretched man that I am. Who can deliver? Nothing but the blood and the power of Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. It's what brought the salvation. Salve a safe place. That we can go boldly. That was Paul trying to let them know that as a believer, he said, I understand. My journey, <laughs> how y'all listen. Paul said, Your journey wasn't like mine. I thought I was serving God. I thought I was doing the will of God and find myself persecuting those very ones that the Lord was going to turn my life around and cause me to preach to, cause me to be the leader, cause me to be able to help the scales fall off their eyes. Paul said, this is the journey that I had. Paul said, I can relate to this thing. Not by works of the law, but by the faith of his, through his death. If the law could justify a person then Jesus' death on the cross would have been for, for naught. And we know that's not true. So the law couldn't do what Christ could do. God gave the law as a disciplinary uh, until the arrival of Christ. It, it was just a law put in place to govern us. So Paul was addressing some people that were still holding on to the law. They didn't want to uh, hold on to the, the new transformation that took place through the death and burial and resurrection of Christ, they still wanted to hold on to the old traditions, the old law. Have you ever found yourself holding on to something that grandma might have taught you, or you might have been raised up a certain way, and the Lord wants to take you to another level, but you keep holding on to that thing? It's not doing you any good. It's good to talk about, but it hasn't set you free. If, if I could stop right here before I go a little further, if, if I can generate a question that I can ask, I know I can't hear y'all back, but uh, I'd just like to ask this question. question. Your journey, the journey, your life journey, are you satisfied where you are right now in Christ? Or, or you say, I'm thrilled, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad. I, I know you can do when things are going well, but could you actually say that when things don't go your way? When you get that bad report, or you get in that argument, a heated argument, or debate, or or whatever it may be that cause you to get off your game, or, or, or your finances just seem like they're they're not equal not to nothing. You're still struggling in every area. Like your your mind is messed up. You you have no peace, and you you're trying to serve God. You're trying to witness to people, but they seem to rub you the wrong way. Am I talking to anybody? Or you young man, or a young woman, you just you just said, I'm trying to do the right thing. I was out there in the street. I was doing anything I was big and bad enough to do. But my parents and my grandparents always taught me to be respectful and find me a nice young lady or find me a nice young man. And then I tried, tried marriage. I tried a relationship and get serious to tie myself down to one person I could spend the rest of my life with. And you find your marriage or your relationship in a chaotic situation. I mean, it's just... It, it almost seems like it's the worst thing that ever happened to you. 
If you fall in one of those categories, whether it be sickness, financial, or, or any type of anything that will separate you from that, I'm talking about that peace, that peace of God where it seems like you're floating through the day. I had those days. I've had some of them days where it seemed like I was, everything was just going well. But I also had some of them days when I was saying, I didn't say it out loud, but in my heart, like, Lord, where are you? What did I just do to you, Lord, to cause you to turn the page on, cause things to just collapse all around me? I come to talk to you tonight. That's who I want to reach tonight. And Paul was addressing the people in Galatia. He was letting them know that you got to be careful how you treat people. We, 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 can, we can join in the many different missions in the church that can actually help people, feeding people, the, the food pantry, you know. I, that is a total blessing. I'm telling you, you would get blessed if you ever took time out just to come and feed people who who, who need something and we're able to provide. That's, that's a good feeling, knowing that our church collectively come together and gather the food and prepare it and pack it and put it in their vehicles. That That's nothing to be ashamed of. I, I, I pray God that would give them a, a hundredfold blessing because they're not afraid to say, I need help. But that's where, where us, us Christians, believers, find ourselves where we're afraid to say help because we worry about what other people are going to think about us. And then when we don't have that ability to be able to say, help me, I'm struggling, we find ourselves stepping on other people or looking down at other people to bring some type of peace of mind to us. I, I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we got to make sure somebody else's life is a little bit more miserable so we can have that peace, so we can feel better about ourselves. So you know it ain't right. I know it ain't right. But th this is how we do sometimes. Well, I, I just, somebody said, oh, I just got blessed with a car. You say, oh, yeah, I, I got two. If I ready to get me another one. No, let them, <laughs> let them have that. But because our spirit is at, at dis-ease and maybe disgruntled, we always got to, it's not, it's not the ignorant people that run people out of church. It's the people that are heartless, that don't care. God send people to our church on a regular basis. And look, up, where are they going? Are, are you running them away? Because you haven't learned how to have that compassion. Paul was saying that in order to be effective in this region, Paul was saying in order to be effective, first of all, you got to identify where you are. Paul said, I can relate. Did you trying to do good? You, you good people. I thought I was doing well, but I find myself making Jesus Christ my enemy when I thought I was serving God. You know the story. Paul was on his road on the road to Damascus. He was carrying a letter to be able to persecute Christians. He wanted to put them in jail and lock them up for mentioning the name of Jesus. But on his journey, he ran into Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ had to tell him this very thing. Knocked him off his horse, blinded him, and said, Saul, his name was Saul at that time. Before his name was changed to Paul, his name was Saul. He said, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? Paul wasn't going to persecute Jesus, but he was persecuting the children of God, the believers, the followers. So I, I, wanna get, I want you to rest assured. I hope y'all hear me tonight. I want you to rest assured, if the enemy come to do any damage or harm to you, rest assured that Jesus will intervene, he will intervene with your situation, just like he did the people that Paul Saul was going to, to hit, to kill or lock up. Jesus said, no, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? Jesus said, if you persecute my people, you persecute me. It, it's going to be very difficult for you to, to buck up against the pricks. You can kick, but you won't be the one wind up getting hurt because you mess with my people. That's the reason why we need to have a praise on our lip when we enter into the house of God. That's the reason why we get into our homes and we find our light still on and heat or air still in our house. We need to be able to stop for a moment and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for my blessing because God is looking out for you. He really is. But in this journey, we talk about the necessary journey. The bumps and the bruises that you go through, the ups and downs, the roller coaster ride that we go through, I need you to listen very carefully. They are necessary. They're fine-tuning your spirit man to be able to build your spirit man up to fight this battle called faith. Ah, good.
good guy. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go on. I'm gonna go on a little bit. Faith. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. We mentioned that last week. And the evidence of things not seen. Faith is something you can't see. So when things are not going right and it's feeling bad, the Bible said your faith need to kick in. You need to see a way out. You need to see God is going to bring you through this. But could it be connected to how you treat people? So I want to encourage you tonight. Don't stop doing good, even though your journey can get necessary. Yeah, you fell. Yes, you got hurt. Yeah, get back up. Dust yourself off and say, you know what? I'm getting back in the game. I'm getting back in the game. A man reaps what he sows. Verse 8, Galatians, Galatians chapter 6, verse 8. A man reaps what he sows. Whosoever sow to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. So if you if you sowing something and you're doing something, might be good, but you're doing it just to please your flesh, it's going to lead to destruction. I need you to hear me. But if you do it by the Spirit, your heart would be genuine, even though it might not start out. That's why you got to keep doing good. So it might start out where you, you you might not feel the compassion to a certain level where you say, you know what, I feel this about everybody. It might be times where you'll bless somebody and somebody else will walk by and you won't bless them. Don't beat yourself up. you got to be spirit-led. you got to let the Spirit of the Lord lead you. So many times we stay in that wrestle. Did I do right? Did I should I have done this? We beat ourselves up. God will always give you another opportunity. As long as you're operating by the Spirit of God and not by your flesh. Believers, sisters, my brother, this is what we wrestle with on a regular basis. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, even though that's what we want to battle against. But we warn in our own members. In, 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 in this body, in this makeup we have here, we're wrestling with our flesh and we're wrestling with the Spirit of God, the things of God. And then you got the enemy all in your ear. We're going to talk about the journey of some of these people. And this was Paul's journey. Paul had to come back to a region and, and, and speak some life back into them, peace back into them, because there was some chaos going on in Galatia where they wasn't treating each other right. And Paul had to bring this message back, saying, that don't get weary in the negative things you're going through in life. He said, because I, I went through it. He said, I'm a perfect example. But the Lord told me when he knocked me off the horse on the way to Damascus, I got changed, I got converted. I was blinded for three days. It says that Paul was in hell. He was totally separated from God. Total darkness for three days. And Ananias. Ananias, when they took Paul to the city called Straight, he was there alone, crying out to God, asking God for help. Watch me now. I need you to stay with me. Please don't tune me out. He, he was in total darkness, separate, separated from God, so he thought. But God was still there with him in the middle of the worst part of his journey. His journey was necessary. Paul could have never got to write two-thirds of the New Testament and blessing me and you years later. Years later, we're getting blessed from Paul's writing. He could have never got there. He could have never had that type of anointing where he, his handkerchief and his shadow was healing people. Demons jumping out of people that was in his area from the authority that Jesus Christ had gave him because of his conversion. But his journey, he had to go through that rough period a time in his life to get where God wanted him to be. You would be powerless if you didn't go through nothing. If you didn't have to shed some tears. If you didn't have to feel like, Lord, where are you? Lord, my children, Lord, what's going on? They just seem like they, they listening to the world. I fed them, I brought them, I nursed them. And they don't want to hear nothing I have to say. You're not alone. It's a part of your journey. The Lord said, your journey would be tedious. It would be bumpy. Because I need you to reach out and start operating by your faith. God said, I got a way to get your faith to work. But guess what? You got to go through a journey. Paul, 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 Apostle Paul, the writer of Galatians. Paul said, I understand. I thought I was doing good. But I find myself on my journey doing the wrong thing. Going in the wrong direction. 
if God, if, if God chose you, child of God, if God chose you, he brought you out of darkness to the morning. I hope y'all listening. Are you listening? Somebody say, yeah, just throw it. Yeah, I hear you, Pastor Matt. If he brought you out of darkness and to the marvelous light, look at all the blessings around you. Real quick, I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back on path. I remember going through this time period of my life where it was like I felt less than a man. I wasn't working. I was out for three months and it seemed like finance was going down. My, my manhood, everything. I couldn't do what I wanted to do. Couldn't work. Couldn't. Couldn't do anything for that period of time. I was in bad shape with my back, and I just I just remember being in that rut. And I'm looking at my I'm looking at my property, looking at my house, like look, I'm very lose lose everything that I have. And I just kept hearing God's voice saying, "Keep trusting in me. Keep trusting in me." I'm like, Lord, how can I trust you when I don't see you? Lord, feel like you you turned your back. Look like you're trying to hurt me. I didn't understand it at the time. The Lord said, I had to take you from a good moment to a low moment so you can appreciate and know how much you need me, how much you need to depend on me. And don't stop praying to me. When things start going wrong in your life, the Lord was letting me know you talk to me now more because things are going wrong. When they was going well, you didn't even speak to me. I know you don't want to hear it. Somebody wants something better than that. Somebody said, you, Pastor, you got to give me more than that. No, I want to tell you what the Lord gave me. He said, I had to take you through this. And I could see the Lord. And in, in, in just my sanctified imagination, I could see him being in the room with me, crying, tears falling down his eyes because he wanted to change my situation. But he knew what I needed because he wanted to make me a minister of the gospel. He said, in order to be able to carry forth my word, you got to carry some stains. You got to have some scars. You, you, you got to have a testimony. And God took, took me through a series of testimonies, ups and downs through my journey that was necessary to get me to this point where I can sit comfortably behind this camera and tell you that what a mighty God we serve. Yep. I can, good God in my, I said, what? A mighty God we serve. If I would, if you would have ever told me 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I'd be sitting here giving God praise and telling people about Jesus Christ and telling them to hold on and trust in him and hold on to, to that bloodstained banner and keep on trusting him no matter what it looks like. To lift up your hands, holy hands, and give him praise and honor because he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He'll protect you, your family, your children, your loved ones. He will open doors for you. He will provide for you. I never would have been here if I didn't go through those rough moments. I remember walking out my back door and complaining. I have a rancher. I don't have a big house, a rancher. I love it. Mine. Me and my wife. We love it. Got plenty of land. And I remember walking out the door and saying, I could have had a big house. I could have had this. Moping and complaining. And the Lord stopped me right on the back of my step. And he said, look out this door, son. And what do you see? And I was looking at all my property that I had back there. He said, I bless you with land. And I bless you with it. You can do so many things with it if you learn how to get out of your funk. And stop complaining. And start giving me praise. I already bless you with all the heavenly blessings. And I bless you with, with, with health and and, and strength. But I was focusing on my flesh. Trying to please that flesh. And that believers. Even though you get saved. You still wrestle with that flesh. Paul said I understand y'all. I understand. I understand the, the highs and the lows. But I come to tell you. I've been through it. He said I was in prison. For three days. In hell. And then God showed me a vision. He said, man and Ananias is going to come and lay hands on you and restore your sight. But do you know what Christ said to him before Ananias? He said, Paul, you're going to suffer many things. You're going to have to reap what you sow. Save unsaved. The Bible says, whatsoever man is sowed, he's going to reap. That's why I'm encouraging you believers tonight. I need you all to hear me. It's time to start planting some good seeds. Good seeds is how you treat people, how you conduct yourself. 
how you talk behind the scene. Don't get in church and tear it up with jumping and shouting and you're the main one putting people down and talking behind people. I don't care who you are. Pastor, leader, deacon, from the front door to the back. It doesn't matter who you are. God sees you. And he said, whatsoever man sow, they're going to reap. So I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you tonight through the book of Galatians. Says, Don't get weary in doing good. God said, I got you. I'm going to reward you. Just like he did Paul. Paul had no idea. Saul changed to Paul. Name was changed. When he was sitting alone, he had no idea that a blessing was going to come. Yeah, the angel, God spoke to him through a vision. But sometimes we can be in a rut when God told him, I'm going to bring you out, just hang in there. But it can, look, it can be so heavy that we don't even believe the message. I told you all last week, I said, one thing of doing good and not getting weary in doing good brings. Your faithfulness brings. It brings a message and it brings a blessing. Watch me. Y'all thought, thought I was off. No, I'm not off. Paul hung in there. And because he listened to the message of God, it brought forth a blessing. Okay, let's stop. You say, well, Pastor, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to talk about Paul right now. Yeah, we got to because it's in the Bible. It's a Bible study class. But let me, let me talk to you tonight. It doesn't matter what you may be going through. You can name it. You can write it down. You can say, well, nobody going through Somebody done been through it. Somebody done been through what you're going through. And somebody been brought out by the mercy and the grace of God. And that person who's been brought out by the mercy and the grace of God, because all the chaos are going on in our life, the ups and downs, church, outside the church, at your job, in your body, cause all the chaos we go, the enemy has caused us to shut our mouth. Where we stop telling our testimony. God ain't giving you a new testimony. We, we stop telling people how good God is. We start being judgmental. All you got to do is watch yourself. I don't need nobody to tell me when I'm doing right. I, I could feel it. I said, I could be laughing and, you know, going too far with something. And the Holy Spirit said, you know you need to cut it out. But what we do, we ignore it sometimes, and then we have to face the consequence. I'm getting old, y'all. I'm 57 years old. I'm, I'm getting tired of those consequences. I done learned when you plant some good seeds, you're going to reap a good harvest. And tonight, if you don't hear anything else I said, we got to learn. Let's plant some good seeds. Paul was saying, don't, don't y'all get weary in doing good. He said, let us, let us be, not become weary in doing good. For at a proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I can only imagine when Paul was addressing them, he, he had no choice but to go back and said, I was shipwrecked. I was beaten to inches of my life. Paul didn't even, not only that, he would say, I was bitten by a snake. He said, the very ones that I was working with and serving with together is trying to take my life. Now, it, is that what you want to call a necessary journey? I'm afraid so. Some of us have some events that happen in our life that will just take the feet right from under our bodies. Just cause us to fall out and collapse and never get back up. Losing loved ones. That, come on, y'all. Mamas, losing mamas, daddies, husbands, friends, children. Everyone, I believe, on the air that is listening right now can say, I've been through something I wish I could erase and turn around. But look how God kept you. I, look how God kept you. If he kept you then and he brought you this far, did he think, do you think he brought you that far to leave you? He, he brought you that far to open up your mouth and say, Paul, I took you through that necessary journey so you can go back and minister to the ones that looked and sound just like you. You can easily identify him, Paul, because that was you at one time. He said, such, such was some of you. You were liars, you were thieves, you were fornicators. Such was some of you. Bob said, don't get heady, don't get high-minded. Such was some of you. I know your life might be great now. I know you might be doing well. You might, you might have some letters behind your name. You went to school and got some degrees. That's, that's all fine. God bless you. You know how to uh, pronounce your word better than I can. I know I, I tear up some words. I'm, I'm guilty of it. But one thing I did ask the Lord. I said, Lord, 
if you call me to preach, you, you got to interpret some of the mess I say. You got to be able to uh, interpret some of the things that are coming out of my heart and make them sound good to people's ears. God said, you ain't got to worry about that because I called you. You didn't call yourself John 15, 16. For you did not choose me. I chose you. And I ordained you. I'm talking to somebody here. Stop trying to carry this load by yourself. Say, oh, I got, I got, all you got to do is study and ask the Lord to fill you. He said, if any man lacking knowledge, ask of God, according to the book of James, first chapter. And he said, he would give it to you willingly if you ask. So if you're looking for, how do I get, how do I uh, start witnessing? I'm telling people about Christ. The Bible says, all you got to do is ask. I'll give it to you. I'm, I'm talking to soldiers tonight. Men and women that are in the army of the Lord. I'm talking to you tonight. Get up out of your seat. Quit wasting time. Tell somebody about your Jesus. Galatians. Chapter 6. Now I can move on. Can I move on? I want to move on just a little bit farther. That his encounter with Jesus Christ. You're talking about um, Apostle Paul. His encounter with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus was a life-changing event that took him on his path to setting the captives free. You have been anointed. You have been selected by God. You have been equipped by God through the word of God to be able to speak and let the captives free. You have been given a key. You have been, a, been given a key by God to be, be able to unloose some of those spirits that have been trapped in people. The bondage, the oppression, and the possession. Yes, you have the authority. Now, I ain't telling you go out there and go, go <coughs> want to lay hands on people, cast out then find yourself stripped like the son of the I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your children. There's generational curses that can follow in families. You know, it could be the alcohol spirit that where you, somebody, your grandpa might have been an alcoholic, but his, his son wasn't. But the grandson why not struggling with that same spirit? Well, God has anointed us as leaders to be able to speak to those type of spirits. He would equip you through the word of God. You cannot get the power of God unless you have his word. You got to believe in what you hear. You got to believe in what you see. And God will give you that anointing to be able to. I've seen it done. I, I, I don't have time to go there, but somebody was, had a demon in them that was dragging them across the floor. And at the first moment when I seen it, it scared the you know what out of me. I said, what is this? It was just unreal. Their body was levitating across the floor. I'm, I'm not saying this to brag. I'm bragging on my God. I'm bragging on the power of Jesus Christ that he was able to give me the power through his word. That said, I did not give you a spirit of fear. I gave you a spirit of power. Love and a sound mind. And when you love somebody who might be possessed with a demon, you ain't worried about what that demon going to say if you got the power and the love of God flowing through you. You said there's a soul deep down inside of there that need to be healed. Oh, come on, y'all. Mark chapter 5. Jesus went to the other side. His journey, he had to go to the other side because he was looking for a man that was possessed with a legion of demons. Mark chapter 5, write it down. Read that story. You said Jesus went on a journey. And in his pathway, in his journey, in his, in his travel, Jesus ran across a man who was cutting himself and full of demons. But let me tell you something. When Jesus asked, what is your name? That yet long, young lad said, we're a legion. The demons begin to take. Didn't let the man speak. He said, we're a legion for we're many. But let me show you the power of God. Can I show you the power of God? Legion could be a thousand to five thousand demons, or make you know a large amount of demons. I mean, one demon is enough, but it was legions. It was a bunch of demons in there. But let me show you the power of God. Those legions could not take that man's life. Could, are, are you listening? Those demons, even though there were so many, even though you had so much trouble, chaos, and everything falling around you. That's not the end of your story. The devil can't close the chapter on your life. But God can. God said, I sent somebody who was well equipped. Somebody who'd been through some storms. That had a good intention, but still got mistreated. 
Jesus got, he said, don't, don't, don't come to me with this, say, oh, Jesus, you don't know what I've been through. Jesus said, it was done to me first. He said, they hated me first. But I still love them. That's the power of the love of God. The love of God has power to be able to run demons off. And the only way we can be able to, to, to capture this power, endure this power, is doing what the word of God said. Don't get weary in doing good. Keep treating people good. Your power will come when you learn how to genuinely care and concern about others. That that man that had a lead, young lad that had a legion of demonism, those demons could not take his life. There was a there was a voice that only Christ can hear that was screaming out from the death. The demons tried to out yell or out. He, he tried to make a noise louder than your cry. But Jesus got an ear to be able to hear the depths of your heart, the cry. There was a, there was a cry out from the guy, the young man who was filled with the legion of the demons. I believe it was saying, Jesus, help me. Have mercy on me. And Jesus said, I'm coming. Yes, I'm in the flesh, but I'm going to get on the boat. I'm going to the other side because somebody needs me. Young man, young woman. Jesus hear you cry. And if you're listening tonight, good God Almighty, the Holy Spirit is speaking to me right now to you. God knows exactly where you are and he's coming for you. Through the voice, my voice, through the people around you, he's coming for you. Saints of God, my brothers and sisters, Shallow Baptist family, open your mouth and begin to tell people how good your God is. And watch how your life begin to change. Watch how your shift. It's going to be a shift in your journey. Just like it was shifting Paul's life. Just like it was shifting the, the man who was possessed with the demons. Young man was possessed with the demons. His life shifted. Because Jesus Christ heard his cry. And said, Lord, have mercy on me. I believe that was a, came out of the young man. And Jesus, he blotted out the sound of the enemy. Told the enemy to shut up. And to come out of him. And he set him free. But when he set you free, you got to stay free. This is what Paul was letting them know. Don't keep hanging on this anger and, and disgruntlement towards one another. He said, keep on doing good and don't get weary. Because if you're hanging there doing good, you're going to reap the blessing. You're going to reap the blessing of God. A couple more things I want as I, to, as I transfer over to something else. The power and the love of God. Three things, three different times I, um, Paul said in his journey, Paul's journey, we jump back to Paul. Paul said, if three different times that I begged the Lord to take away this thorn that was in my flesh. If you write down the script, write the scripture down. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, starting at verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 starting at verse 7. It says, Even though I have received such wonderful revelation, it's Paul talking, I have received such wonderful revelation from God, so to keep me from becoming proud. When God gives you a revelation or understanding of his word, you have to be very careful that you don't try to steal God's praise. I need you all to hear me. Paul, Paul is explaining this. That's how Paul can take the message back to the people of Galatians. Because he said, I've been through it. I know what I'm talking about. He said, learn to appreciate your journey. Even though it might come with some peaks and valleys, I learned to appreciate it because it's really going to get you where you need to go. And Paul was saying in the second Corinthians chapter 12, he said, even though I have received such wonderful revelation, deep revelation, God was able to give him some deep things he couldn't share with other men. He said, so to keep me from becoming proud or a big-headed, thinking it's all about me. He said, I was giving, and listen to this, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me, to keep me from becoming too proud. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. What? I, I can't say what. You need to know. This is of God, your journey. If he chose you, before you, Jeremiah chapter 1, he said, before you was in your mother's womb, I knew you, I called you, I, 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 I ordained you, I sanctified you, I, I was a puzzle maker, I put, you to, I put the right pieces in your life, I was the potter and you was the clay. 
and I've formed you and I, I'm making you to and what I want you to be. He, he said, even though I've done all that, I know your limitations. I know if I put too much on you, if I give you too much of anointing, or too much of my grace and my mercy, I have to allow the enemy who worked for me. Can, can I say that? Y'all didn't hear me. Lewis said, I have to allow the enemy who works for me to buff you, to keep you in check. Because if I don't, you're going to run and step over people. No, you, you didn't start out that way. But because you've been in my grace and covered by my mercy so much, sometimes if the Lord don't keep us humble, if, if he don't keep us on our knees praying, if he don't keep things a little troubling at times, Troubling because he knows he's going to make a way. He knows he already made a way of escape according to the word of God. He's already made an escape for you. But sometimes I got to allow it to look a little fuzzy. I got to allow it to look a little smoke. Your, dust, your road got to get dusty a little bit. Because I keep you from getting too heady and high-minded and proud. So I use the enemy. I use Satan according to this verse 8. He said, he said three times. I begged the Lord to take this thing away from me. And each time he said, my grace is sufficient. Somebody, somebody, can somebody say that with me? The Lord, the Lord said, my grace. He said, my grace is all you need. In the worst time of your life. You need my grace. In the best time of your life, you need my grace. When everything is going well, you need my grace. My grace is sufficient. God said, I don't have to add nothing. When I died on the cross, my grace covered you and will cover you until the day you leave here and you stand before me. My grace is all you need. I'm not taking this thorn away because I sent it. The thing is, I need you to carry forth my message through your journey when you're feeling good. Paul said, in all things, learn to be content in the very state that you're in. So if, 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 if you got pain in your body, racking in your body, he said, learn to be content. Find a way to give God thanks even through your pain. I'm talking to somebody tonight. He said, my grace is sufficient. The Lord made a statement, a declaration. My grace is all you need. My grace, my grace, my grace. He said, my grace is all you need. It's sufficient. My power works best in weakness. I know y'all didn't want to hear this. Y'all said, Pastor Mac, you got to teach something else. But I can't get off of this. I wanted to jump through and run through all the scriptures and leave you with a bunch of scriptures with no substance. I need you to hear the meat of this. We can't grow. We can't grow the church. We can't grow our families. We can't grow the body of Christ until we learn to capture what's already been laid out through the word of God. He said, my grace is sufficient. It's all you need. And my power works best in weakness. There's no weak weakness in God. There's no weakness in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But during our weakest moments is when God worked the best. Because during our weakest moments, we depend and we talk to him and we trust in him more. We don't pray until we hurt. I'm talking about really pray. Let us be hurt. Everything going well, Lord, I thank you. And you're looking at your bank account and you're looking at all the, the, the glamorous stuff you might have. But let some of them things get taken or start easy. Your bank account start lowering. Your body start, you get some pain. Oh, oh, feel like a heart attack. Oh, mouth twist. Oh, feel like a stroke. My blood pressure don't went up. Or somebody getting on your door, you're snappy. You, these, are some, these are some things that will not go away. If, if my wife is here. I, you know, she upstairs, but. My wife can tell you this. I can be very difficult to deal with at times, and, and so can she. But we made up in our mind, we love each other enough that we're not going to walk away from each other just because we have a disagreement. The enemy has gotten relationships and broken them up because of disagreements, and that's all it was, a disagreement. But when you get the true love of who Christ is and the characteristics of God, and you've been taking on his traits, you begin to say, love is more powerful, have more depth than any type of disagreement. Years ago, I used to 
I'm, I'm leaving. Walk out of the house and go in the car and sit by the side of the road. So I ain't leaving my house. Oh, no disagreement. We have some quiet moments, but before you know it, we're back eating and laughing and joking again. This is what the enemy does when you don't fill yourself with the true word of God. The word of God is out there. But if you ain't open your heart to receive it, you can find yourself dancing with the devil more often than you would like to. I know what I'm talking about here. You got to say, yes, it's bad. Yes, it, look, it don't look good. But let me tell you something. That God told me that I was blessed, that I was more than a conqueror. He said I could do all things to him. By his stripes, he told me I was healed. And when are you going to start believing? Whose report are you going to believe? I choose to believe God's report. Because you know what? His, his report got some backing. It got some proof. He has evidence. He got some clear evidence that he is a keeper. Oh yeah, he is a keeper. He will keep you. Many of those nights when I laid my head down, my mind was wrestling. I said, I won't be able to get no peace. And before you know it, I'm snoring. Because he was able to give me peace. He calmed my spirit. You're going to have those moments, church. You're going to have those moments, believers. Grab, I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you to say, hey, Lord, you know, keep me in this, keep me in this bond. Or keep me in this journey, this tight journey. No, no, I'm saying learn to appreciate the journey. Because it is necessary. It is necessary. My grace is all you need. Pop, I work better in your weakness. And he says, so now I am glad to boast about my weakness. Paul said, now I'm glad to boast about it. Why are you glad to boast about it? Let me tell you something. Why are you glad to boast about it? Let's see my clicker thing back up. He said, I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. The, the power of God can't work through you until you learn to be thankful, be content for where you're at. I, 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 I'm, I'm going on. I'm going on. I'm going on. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned that no matter what state I am, therefore I need to be content. Romans chapter 8. Write this down. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. It said, what then shall we say these things? If God is for us, say that with me. If God is for us, it don't matter what the devil hell is trying to do in your life. It don't matter what type of direction your flesh is trying to take you in. If God be for us, he's more than the whole world against us. And your job is to do whatever you have to do to get to Christ. The woman with the issue of blood, she said, if I could just get, she got it a thought in her mind first. She hadn't even got to the hem of his garment. She said she thought about it. If, but if I could just touch, if I could just make my way through this crowd, make my way through the storm, through the wind that's blowing, if I could just make my way through and get to him, he's, I know I'm going to be free. I know I'm going to be made whole. I know my blessing is going to come. I know my life is going to turn around. I know my children are going to be saved. No, I don't need to see them coming down the highway and giving their hand to God. Yes, I would love to see that. But I, I'm believing by faith. If I don't see it, God's still going to work it out. Lay hands on your stomach, the pregnant woman, one who's about to bear a child, and pronounce a blessing over your child. And when you see that child grow and mature and you see him going down the wrong path, don't forget, don't forget about that prayer that you prayed unto God. Because he said, I'm the God that changes not. I don't change. So don't change your thoughts about him. Don't think, well, God don't love me anymore. He, his power is no longer there. Don't do like the children of Israel did. Did you bring us out here to die? No, he said, I brought you out here to see my power. I need to get you away from all that other nonsense that was distracting you. Bring you out in the wilderness. And don't get caught and die in the wilderness like they did. Make your way to Christ. The woman said, I got to get to him. And when she got to his hymn, she and she was made whole. All that she was going through. Blood to see, bent over. People didn't want to be around her. Probably called her everything but a child of God. But she made her way to Jesus and her journey changed. But she had to go through that struggle in order. I, I can only imagine what her testimony was like after she got healed. Can I get an amen in it? What should your testimony be now after all God done for you? 
Is it still woe is me? If it is, you might need to check your dental records because you might not know him. But if you know him, if you know him, you need to stand up on your feet in your house and lift your hands and give your God praise. I, I didn't mean to stay on Paul all night, but the Lord kept me here because I don't want to jump off of this scripture if the Lord gave the scripture to me as a foundation scripture. He said, you got to give some theological content to what Paul was actually going through and why he was writing this. There was some chaos going on in that region. And God took Paul through his journey to bring him back to some people who were going through and feeling the same way he used to feel. So God equip you, your journey experience, your ups and downs, your peaks and valleys. You went through that because God is going to send you right back to people that looks and acts just like you. I know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I guess what? You, you know who attract God used to draw to me? Th those ones who smoke weed like I used to smoke weed. Those ones that drank like I used to drink, but had a good heart. Still know how to respect people and still know how to say please and thank you but still had a struggle with my mind and not sure who I was and my wrestling with my flesh. That's where I live at. Most of us are there. Look, look you, you want to know if a person still got a good heart? Talk about their mama and see what happens. You, you'll see who you're dealing with. Them are genuine people that still have a love. They, they still respect their mamas. We, we got somebody to disrespect their mama. Our job is not to talk about them. Our job is to pray for them. If the anointing of God and the Holy Spirit can change us, if God before you, I said it, if God before you, who can stand against us? There's nothing that God can't change. There's nothing that God can't change. Paul was that example. I was a killer of Christians. And he turned me around and made me a leader of Christians. But I had to go through my journey. Yeah, I know we're winding down. We're closing down. We got another six minutes here, but... I, I, I just can't let this thing go. Romans chapter 8 said, What then shall we say to these things? If God. If God. It's if there. Because you got to know, is God for you? Or are you a believer in the follow of Christ? Do you receive his son, Jesus, through the death, burial, and resurrection? Do you know now that you are connected to God? Now you got access and you can talk to God and he can hear you. You have to know that. That because I accepted his son, I have a voice now. I have access to the father. The Bible says that the veil in the temple was torn. There was no more entry between us and God. We can go boldly before him and cry out to him. In closing tonight, if your journey been tedious and it's been rough, and it still may be rough, save. Yeah, I'm talking to saved people. I'm also talking to unsaved people. And I pray there's someone tonight. God hears you. He loves you. He has a way of escape for you. He have a way out. But you got to want it. He said, they that call upon the name of the Lord. Good. Good. They that call upon the name, if you just say, Jesus, I believe, he said, thou shalt be saved. Because Christians, some of us, so, some of us had set a poor example of what a believer should look like. It makes the world a little afraid to come to church. But I believe, based on the vision that God has given Shallow Baptist Church and the people that he is sending to Shallow Baptist Church, I just believe that God is turning the page to our journey. That necessary journey. The blessing is on the way. Just like the message came to Sarah and Abraham from the message of God. Saying that by this time next year, you're going to have your blessing. It's going to turn the world upside down. It's the promise that God had for you. Yeah, you had to wait a long time for it. But Sarah and Abraham, your blessings are coming. My brother and sister, your blessings are coming. You're going to be pregnant with a ministry that's going to bring forth healing, deliverance, and peace, and love, and the mercy and the grace of God. 
But you got to open your mouth and you got to trust God. I'm a living witness. I wouldn't be standing here or sitting here before you if I didn't learn how to trust God with everything that I have and lean not to my own understanding. Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I, I promise you next week, let the Holy Spirit lead me in another direction. What I have here on my PowerPoint, I didn't get a chance to go to. But I promise you next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about Peter's journey. We didn't get a chance to talk on Peter. Peter had another journey, different from Paul. Peter wanted to fish. God made him fishermen. And then we have, also we have other characters in the Bible we want to talk about. We want to talk about that David. David, all of these had these necessary journeys. Just like yours. They had similar stories that you can relate to. Where they struggled. You seen them one time, they were they felt like they were anointed and they were doing what God asked them to do. And then you see them later. Even Elijah and Elijah find themselves running from the enemy. So terrified. Running from the enemy. But God turned their life around and said, your journey is necessary because I have listeners and readers that are going to be telling your stories for generations. And guess what? Your story is going to be told by your children and grandchildren. How you were and how God transformed your life. Can I get an amen? Tonight, before we close, we're going to close out in prayer. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. If you would, please do me this favor. Hit like and share on Facebook. Share this word. If you believe it was a blessing to you, please share it with somebody else. This was just a part of Paul's journey. His necessary journey that equipped him to be able to preach to a generation. Even to this current date that we live in right now. Paul words that God breathed upon and anointed is touching people today, years later. So Father God, I thank you. I thank you for the listeners I thank you for the saved as well as the unsaved. Unsaved people, we hear you. And Lord, I pray that each believer, that Lord, you place in our heart, creating a safe place for those that are seeking for help can find help through us. That we can, we can be that example, pointing towards heaven. Not pointing towards us, but pointing towards you and say, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but through him. So, Lord, I bless each and every one tonight. I pray that everyone be safe. But, Lord, equip us. And, Lord, teach us how to be content no matter what state we're in. To accept our journey and to know that you're with us. And if you before us, stay with me. If the Lord before us, if God before us, who can stand against us? He's more than the whole world. The whole world against us. We win. We win. God bless you. You are a winner. Until we meet again, I'm Pastor Gary Mack. Necessary journey. God bless you and have a blessed night.